Welcome to the CBS show. It's the CBS show. Helping you expand on what you know. Throw in a meme of the week and a review of the screen. And you have a show that covers everything. Hey, hey, Team Stevia, and welcome to episode 85 of the Stevia show. A talk show a podcast that covers pop culture, world news, liquor artistry, and everything in between. And I am Steven. And this is Lydia. And we hope everybody is doing well, had a nice and safe 4th of July. And we hope you enjoyed our previous episode where we talked about uh, Dr. Disrespect, uh, SpaceX, all of that. Um, has there been an update to the, to the uh, Twitch drama, Lydia? No update. No. Still, uh, still silent on both sides. So. Oh, oh wow, gotcha. And then, do we still not know what Am- uh, what Brime is? Is that still still no idea what that is either? They they have their Twitter, but they there's nothing. Nothing happened. Huh. That's bizarre. Yeah. So maybe. So I don't know. So maybe we we maybe we just won't get answers. So that just might be you know part of it. I guess so. I guess maybe. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, who knows? Well, not us and probably not even them. So clearly not us. Yeah, clearly not us and maybe not even them. So we will just wait and see. So for the meme of the week this week, uh, I am the current champion. So that was awesome. Uh also Ooh. yeah, also by default. So those are the best wins whenever you don't really have oh, to do yeah. so whenever you don't have to really do anything. Uh so the meme this week is actually from Parks and Recreation, um, which uh, is one of my favorite sick comes and it is the uh where when ben wyatt he's uh, one of the characters he's uh, leslie nope's uh, love interest he goes into a depression and he does this really weird stop motion animation film and he says would a depressed person make this and i just swapped out his little figurine of himself with my local music showcase and it says can a depressed can a depressed person make this no and that was my meme and as a depressed person i can say that the answer is yes that you know th- that you know we can make stuff like that so um happy to be the current edge lord uh, i will uh rule with a you know let me not an iron fist maybe like a bronze fist you know for a week and just uh just let it rock and roll so uh, what media do you have for us this week lydia um the movie theaters are still closed still okay so we've been watching you know trying to be watching shows we've been watching golf lots of golf still but, um but it's but current it's we- current golf now right yeah, it's okay, live, okay. Real live golf, so it's okay. Good. Um, so we watched this show called I Know This Much Is True, and it's on HBO. It's following the parallel lives of identical twin brothers, Dominic and Thomas Birdsey, and a story of betrayal, sacrifice, and forgiveness. Um, this TV show stars Mark Ruffalo and his brother Mark Ruffalo. Because he plays the twins, so he plays both. Oh They're wow! Identical twins. Okay, gotcha. Because I was waiting. So, I was like, "There's no way his brother's name is also Mark Ruffalo." Like that would just no, suck. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he plays both identical twins. So he does an excellent job. Um, because one of the brothers actually has a lot of mental illness. So um, Mark Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo portrays both of them. It's he does an excellent job. Um. So this is available only on HBO. Um, I will say that this show is not for the lighthearted. It is a very depressing show. And at times I did have to walk away because it was just so sad. And um, and it's kind of slow. It picks up halfway through. I actually think that the episodes are still going on. I think we've watched five or six um, and they're released every, every week. I don't know how many there's going to be. But um, it's definitely a show that is not... It's not a comedy at Gotcha. All. But is it good? Yeah. Well, I, yes, it's good. <laughs> it's just kind of boring. Okay, gotcha. Okay, um, but the story's good then. The story's good, yeah. Okay, it's cool. Just, it's just really slow, so you just have to, like, keep trucking. Gotcha. Sounds good. Well, thank you for that, Lydia. Um, and I'm sure yep. you will give us a, a numerical value once you're finished with it, correct? I will. Yes. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. So we do have a bit of things to talk about today, uh, kind of mix of good and bad. So thankfully, it's not all sad, but we would like to uh, extend our thoughts to the family of Tulsa Police Department Sergeant Craig Johnson, who passed away Tuesday of last week. According to the Tulsa World on June 30th, Sergeant Johnson and partner officer, um, excuse me, partner, part partner, 
his partner, Officer Aurash Zarkashan, was shot three times by suspect uh, David Anthony Ware during a traffic stop for an expired temporary tag. Sergeant Johnson, who has been with Tulsa Police Department since 2005, uh, unfortunately passed away. Officer Zarkashan is still alive and will require extensive surgery. So something that I didn't write on here is that this was actually Officer Zarkashan's, I believe um, he only completed his basic, uh, I guess, training or police academy, whatever it's called, six weeks ago. So he was uh, he, he is pretty new to the force. And then he just basically right off the bat um, suffered, uh, suffered big injuries. And he's going to have to uh, have more brain surgery and stuff like that. Um, but so sad. I, it is very sad. But as of today, he is still alive. But off, but Sergeant Johnson did unfortunately pass away. Dang. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. And then the Tulsa world further states that this is the first time a member of Tulsa Police Department has been killed on duty in 24 years. Uh, previously, wow. in June of 1996, uh, Officer Dick Hobson was killed while chasing an armed robbery suspect. So it has been 26 years since uh, Tulsa police since the Tulsa police officer was uh, was killed on duty. Uh, but still, this is a, a very sad time for Tulsa. Yeah, definitely very sad, but. Hopefully we can. Hopefully the other officer is going to be okay. Yeah, hopefully so. Yeah, our thoughts. I know he has a long road to recovery, so we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. So um, our thoughts are for sure with uh, the families and with Tulsa Police Department. Um, up next. Yeah, kind of a 180 turn, but yeah, up next, and, and this is where I was telling you I had a bone to pick with uh, with Elon Musk. Uh, so we all. Uh, all I can do is laugh at this. Yeah. Um. So Kanye West. He announced yesterday on the 4th of July that he is running for president. Yes. And in a tweet, he said, uh, we must now realize the promise of America by trusting God, unifying our vision and building our future. I am running for president of the United States. Hashtag 2020 vision. Uh, the only thing I have to say to this is Jesus Christ. Like, I just can't. Like, 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 hopefully this is a hoax. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, eccentric billionaire Elon Musk replied by stating that Kanye has his full support. Hopefully he's trolling, but knowing Elon, he might not be. So that's kind of. Uh, Which is weird because Kanye has or Donald Trump has Kanye's full response support i'm pretty sure which is totally weird yeah because kanye's been wearing the maga hats he's been right. like he's hung out with donald trump multiple times he, uh, he you know uh trump did that thank you kanye very cool tweet uh forever yeah. ago so this whole thing is weird and i mean i kind of think that it's not real like i don't like i think this is surely like he's doing something else um and july fools the July fools, maybe, but that's just it's just weird. Uh, and the, the kind of the thing that that I'm wondering on this is I wonder if Kanye will figure out a way to charge people to vote for him, kind of like how he like tricked people into paying to go to church. Uh, that yeah. was a kind of weird thing, too. So uh, we'll, we will just have to wait and see how all of that goes. But it is indeed bizarre. And I, I'm kind of hoping that Elon doesn't really support Kanye for president. But that I mean, on one hand, well, you know, Elon is very. um. He is very eccentric. He's oh. got some, you know, he is um, a 100% believer in the, uh, we are in a, um, it's the simulation theory. Oh, yeah, he yeah. He 100% believes in the simulation theory. Yeah, and a lot of really, really smart people believe in that. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson believes in it as well. Yeah. He's another, you know, heavy hitter in the science world. Um, but also Neil deGrasse Tyson hasn't said that he is going to support Kanye West. So yeah. I'm kind of excited, or not excited, yeah. kind of nervous to see how this plays out. So hopefully this is all a joke. Yeah. Um, but we will wait and see. Uh, and then yeah, next. Yeah, but now that he did this, you know people are for sure going to write in Kanye West. Oh, on geez. Jesus, no yeah. in November, like yeah. they did freaking Harambe. Oh yeah, for Harambe. Yeah, yeah, Harambe. I think got like three thousand votes or something. It was yeah, a. It was Harambe a. They got three thousand votes. It was a negligible number, but I mean, Kanye West has a lot more celebrity power than Harambe does. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully, Kanye West doesn't ruin this election. But I mean, with how weird this this year has been, and we did have that streak of good news last week. 
week. So maybe this is what's going to bring it down is Kanye maybe. <laughs> ruining the election. Um, but speaking of the election, so hundreds of former George W. Bush staffers are endorsing Biden, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, the gist of it is that NPR reported on July 1st that a group called 43 Alumni for Biden are going to do what they can to campaign for the former vice president. So the group's director, Karen Kirksey, that's a fun, fun name to say, Karen Kirksey, uh, stated, for four years, we have watched with grave concern as the party we loved has morphed into a cult of personality that little resembles the party of Lincoln and Reagan. Kirksey goes on to say, we endorse Joe Biden, not necessarily in full support of his political agenda, but rather in full agreement with the urgent need to restore the soul of this nation. Once elected, we look forward to working in a bipartisan way through civil spirited debate on the many issues facing Americans today and for decades to come. So that's pretty that, wow. that's pre yeah, that's pretty big, especially with the George W. Bush administration and Bush himself kind of tend to keep quiet on current political yeah. affairs because, of course, George W. Bush was not very popular in the latter half of his presidency. So this right. is kind of a rare and noteworthy endorsement. Uh, coming out of the former George W. Bush camp. So, yeah, it's big. I think it's, I mean, when a Democrat gets George W. Bush on his side. Yeah, absolutely. So, that, uh, so I that, think that that's cool. Yeah, that is bizarre. So, next up in, uh, in bad news, what do we have? Third officer involved in the murder of George Floyd released on bail. According to NPR, Tao, Tao, Tao. Yeah, that's tau? yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it is Tao Tao or or, or Two Tao, tau something tau? like that. Yeah, has posted his bail of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on July fourth. Tao is the third of the four officers to post bail and be released. Derek Chavon, the officer who was kneeling on Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes, is the only one still in jail. He has a bail of one point two five million dollars. All four officers are facing felony charges, and as of yet, none have entered a plea deal. I just can't believe that you can just out of thin air come up with, you know, three quarters of a million dollars to be released. Yeah, how does that work? It's, uh, I guess I just don't know how bails work. I, I mean, I, I never had to do a bond. Uh, yeah. And honestly, I think the bail system's kind of ridiculous in the first place. I mean, because yeah, basically, yeah, I mean, basically what could happen is this guy and well, the other three is so 75 percent of the officers who are facing felony charges have been released from jail and they could basically hightail it to like, you know, the Ukraine or like the Philippines or something like that, where they're where the United States isn't going to go and get them. So that's right. ridiculous. And the fact that that Derek Chauvin, who, he he's on bail for one point two five million dollars. That's just to me, that's ridiculous. Um, and then also yeah. um, also um, I just don't even think they should have be able to have bail. No, absolutely not. I mean, it'd be different like if they should have to sit there and wait until they're Turn. Right. Until their trial. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's nothing stopping them from just like fleeing the country. And, you know, like it's not like it's not right. like like anybody's going to go look for them. Like this is not how it works. So that's a, that's really stupid. Uh, and then yes. all and then also it is worthy to note that the officers who murdered Breonna Taylor, who was the EMT from Louisville, Kentucky, have still not been met with criminal charges. And Breonna Taylor was murdered in an incorrect residential search nearly four months ago on March 13th. 13th. So that is, of course, not great. Um, that is the they same. Pa they passed Brianna's law, but have not no, arrested said, the the officers. Their mur yeah, her murderers, which is crazy. And this is also uh, we talked about it uh, uh, back in March when it happened. But this was the same person who the boyfriend uh, tried shooting yep. at the police in self-defense, which is w within all of his rights. And then he he almost got an attempted murder charge, but they dropped mm -hmm. that. But the police officers who murdered her are still, you know, just bebopping around just roaming Still the streets hanging out outside the world just being police officers yeah which is totally ridiculous um but next up in local music news uh, our friends in goodfellow released a video for their new single called empathy and we would like to thank them for letting us air a sneak peek of their new single during the stream for our local music showcase last week the music video was officially released this past friday and already has over five thousand views so way to go guys congratulations yeah, it's a really good song. I really like it. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. Um, so Oklahoma election updates. All three of the ballot results were we endorsed happened. Woohoo! Yeah, which is Abby a great Broyles feeling. 
Abby Broyles would take on Senator Jim and Hoff in November. Abby won her election by 131,571 votes and with 60.45% total of the vote between four opponents. Yeah, so it wasn't even close for Abby, so congratulations to her. And then uh, and then Kojo Asamoa Caesar will be facing Representative Kevin Hearn for Oklahoma's first congressional district, which is what many of us in Team Stevia are in. He won his, uh, he won his election by 14,944 votes and with 63.64% of the total vote, so congratulations to Kojo. That's Awesome. Um, and then state question 802 passed to pass a constitutional amendment expanding Medicaid narrowly passed in a campaign marred by misinformation. Yes, passed by only 6,553 votes and 50.49 percent of the vote. Yeah. So, Stephen, I did want to I'm glad you put this on here because um, we were talking a little bit about it. And it's like, you know, if you look at the map. It's the peop the places that have places of higher education are the ones that voted for yes. And all of our rural towns voted for no because they did. I just don't think they understood what this was. And clearly it was, you know, the whole Medicaid thing is actually for our rural populations. And so we were talking about how, you know, we actually it takes it takes the non rural non rural educated to save the rural non educated right right and this from of course themselves. right right and this of course isn't saying that that all people in rural america are uneducated but it is but but that yeah. map is extremely I, I think i talked about that with you for like 30 minutes like i was like yeah. super i was super interested with it uh, but it's also weird to know that like you mentioned the i think uh, seven counties that voted yes not only uh, had institutions of higher education Education, but they also are all urban areas that would not, like you mentioned, benefit from this bill. Um, and the main reason why is because, like, like we mentioned, it was a big misinformation campaign from the no side saying that this was a extension of Obamacare, which last time I checked, Medicaid and Medicare were passed by Franklin Delano Roosevelt way back mm -hmm. in the 1940s, you know, not in 2008 or whenever um, Obama did Obamacare. So they were basically duped into thinking that this is oh this is socialism like we don't deserve our rural yeah. hospitals blah 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 and well, we've and our um our governor kevin stitt had actually a ad out i don't know if it ever popped up on yours but it popped up on mine a few times about how this was going to cost oklahomans 200 two hundred thousand dollars out of our budget when in reality we're actually bringing a billion dollars back to right. Oklahomans. Right. And it's like, because currently our taxes go to other places for, for healthcare and they don't even come to us. Right. And then the also of Oklahoma. And then also uh, I know during uh, governor Fallon's uh, during governor Fallon's terms or wh whatever you want to call whatever she did. Uh, we had, <laughs> uh, um, we did have quite a few rural hospitals close because yep. governor Fallon didn't want to extend it because it was, it was uh, like a slap in the face to Obama or whatever her high horse was or whatever. Uh, and it's just sad. And uh, it's also interesting to note that, yes, like like there will be a, a $200 million startup thing. But the thing is, is we could have hadn't had that taken care of years and years and years ago. Yeah. And and then this is only a one time thing to get Medicaid back to where it was. So we're, we as in like the citizens are correcting the mistakes that our politicians have done. Um, the past know. few years, that's but all we do is correct. Right. And then the weird thing is, is like, yeah, like $200 million, like that's a lot of money. But like you mentioned, the billions of tax dollars and also the revenue generated from saving our rural hospitals, like that'll take care of that in no time. Like that's yeah, just, it's, exactly. it's, it, it's so stupid. I'm glad yes passed. And, um, of course for, from us urbanites in Oklahoma, you are welcome. If you are, listening. yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you know, what is it that, uh, that Maui says, well, you know, what can we say except you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. That is such a catchy song and I probably shouldn't be so singing good. it. Uh, but, but anyway, so that was a super close election. That map, if you haven't seen it is extremely interesting. Go look at it. And then finally, we do have some news with us. So first up, uh, the meme of the week, uh, I am going to start posting that every Monday to our Instagram story so people who aren't in the Discord can see it, even though you should join our Discord because it's a blast. And let's be honest, none of us really have anything better to do. So let's everybody join the Discord. Yeah, if you're not in the Discord, 
you need to get in there. Yeah, absolutely. Text one, if you if you don't have if you can't get in there if you can't find the link, just just DM us and we'll send you the link. Yeah, and it's also in our link tree. You can literally just just tap the Discord button and just then and then, and then boom, you're there. It's it's it, again, it's literally that easy. So easy. Yeah. Um, our stream schedule to be posted. We now have a permanent streaming schedule that we post it every month on all platforms and then every week on our Instagram story and Twitter. We have it worked so that it won't have to shuffle. We won't have to shuffle our dates around um, Stevia League. Yeah. So, so it'll be fun. yeah, we're very excited for that. Uh, so to have a normalized schedule and and uh, and and the graphic Lydia made looks really good. We're excited to share it with you all today. And then also <laughs> speaking of League, uh, we will be voting for our next game this week. Uh, we do apologize for the delay, but we have been working on the streaming schedule to make sure everything's you know nice and uh, nice and pretty. Uh, and also our our huge interview for next week, which we are extremely stoked about. So, so excited. Yeah, we are very, very excited. So I think that's all we have for today. Uh, and of course, yeah. So uh, we, of course, thank you for listening. And our next episode, episode 86, we will be in interviewing uh, Kojo Asamoah Caesar. And we are, uh, I'd say, like 75% excited, 25% nervous. Or maybe for me, it's the opposite. <laughs> but yeah, I'm nervous. Oh, I'm nervous. But um, it's going to be super fun. Um, we're looking forward to meeting with him. And then, as always, you can find us on all the social media platforms uh, with the handle at the stevia show so be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whichever podcast app you listen to if you're on youtube search for the stevia show and subscribe with the notification button and smash that bell icon we'd like to thank our anchor producers for their continued support you can support us for as little as 99 cents a month and receive exclusive discord rules and bonus episodes every month yes and the bonus episode uh for for july is going to be awesome uh, have you heard of QAnon by chance Why have I heard it, though? I don't know. Oh, no, I, I was asking if you've heard of QAnon by chance. Yes, I have. Oh, OK, because um, that's what we're um, uh, that's the bonus episode I'm going to write is going to be all about. Yeah, it's going to be all about QAnon. Uh, and for those oh, of you. Cool. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, QAnon is a extremely bizarre right wing conspiracy theory. So if you want to listen to that later this month, uh, you can get it for as little as a dollar. And then also I do love I do love a good conspiracy. Yeah, theory. This is right up your alley. Uh, so we also have merchandise through our links in our social media bios. So when you visit us online, check out our link tree and click on merch and we ship nationwide as well so if you live in the philippines uh the ukraine or any other place that the police officers who were released on bail could flee to uh we will ship to you uh so that is about all we have for you all today team stevia uh we are looking extremely forward to next week but for now this is steven and this is lydia and we will see you all later bye bye